Alright guys, this video is going to be about uh, GM front axles in the 73 through 87 series uh, K-series pickups, Blazers and Suburbans, uh, K-10s, 20s, and 30s. Um, basically what I'm going to do, I've noticed that there's a lot of confusion out there about front axles, especially within the half ton, three quarter ton range. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys a little ways that you can identify what axles you have, give you some of the differences and some of the, you know, just general conclusions you can draw from this. Okay, so first thing you need to do, if you have a half ton truck, 73 through 77, or 376, rather, is going to have a Dana 44 front end. That's it. That's the only one they offered. All right. 77 like this truck is. This truck right here is a 77. Prove that to you guys. All right, let's see here. Gross vehicle weight, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't say it. I don't know if it says it on this badge, but it is a 1977, as in the title and the registration. Anyway, 77 was the change over here. This is the first year for the GM corporate 10 bolt uh, front end, which you can see this truck has. All right. Now, a lot of people will go on and on and tell you, oh, the 10 bolt's so weak. You know, oh, you need a Dana 44. In a half ton, that's garbage. Don't even... It's basically the same axle. What do you think GM modeled the 10 bolt after? It was modeled after the Dana 44. Okay? Um, there's a lot of similarities. I think this 44 might have thicker outer diameter axle tubes. I'm not 100% sure. That would make it maybe a little stronger in that respect. But again, I'm not 100% sure on that. It may or may not. Alright, so the dead on way you can tell a GM 10 bolt from a Dana 44 is if you come down here, okay, the bottom of the uh, center chunk here, the, where your gears are, the pumpkin some people call it, whatever, it'll have these little tabs, alright? If it does not have those tabs, then it's a 44. If it does have those tabs, it's a 10 bolt. Uh, the gasket is also different on the cover. Uh, 10 bolts, obviously. But, um, that's the dead on way to tell the difference. Okay? Now, in, so from 77 up and through 1988, this axle is pretty much the same. You'll find variations in the way that the hubs were bolted on uh, to the spindles, different locking setups with nuts and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, nothing really changed in these. Um, but in 88, they changed the axle spline count from 28 spline, which they were from 77 up through 87, to 30 spline, okay? Now the Dana 44 that this axle replaced in 1977 used 30 spline axles, which are stronger. It's only two splines, but it is a stronger setup with the, you know, two more splines. So they did change that in 88. Um, so in 88, through the end of this model series, which I believe was 91, the solid front axle, um, 88 through 91, mostly K5 Blazers, I think, and Suburbans. Uh, if you have a 10 bolt with, from those years, 88 to 91, the axle shafts will not fit the older 10 bolts, and vice versa. Okay. I actually have an axle right here. I'm talking about this axle shaft right here, the spline count. This axle shaft is actually out of a... 84 to 86 CUCV M1009 K5 military blazer. 
Um, and it does have the neck down, which I think the 44 does not have. I don't know if it's going to pick it up on camera. But right here, the axle necks down, right in that little area. I don't believe the, the Dana 44 does that. I believe it's got a straight piece of axle there. Um, but again, everybody everybody goes on and on about strength and stuff like that. The, there really is no difference, all right? I mean, I've been wheeling this thing for a couple of years now. It's got a locker in the front. Um, you know, put it up against big rocks and stuff like that. We haven't broken anything. So, it's more in how you drive. I think if you're going to break a, a 10 bolt, you're going to break a 44. I mean, they, they're essentially the same axle. Okay, guys? Um, the other thing is, I believe the 44s use a tapered hub right here. But I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay. So we went over the, the easy way to tell the difference. Now, um, now when you go, a lot of people have three quarter ton axles. That's a great upgrade to do because you get the 14 bolt full float rear axle. That's the upgrade you're getting out of a three quarter ton swap. Putting a three quarter ton front in gains you nothing but eight lug hubs. There's no strength advantage to putting a three quarter ton front end in one, out of one of these trucks into one of these trucks, okay? The reason being, especially in the 10 bolt era trucks from 77 through 87, it's the same axle. All they did was change your outer, um, your outer hub is the only thing they changed, okay? The center section, the axle shafts, the spider gears, all that crap, it's all the same. So you're not gaining a single thing in front end strength by doing that. In fact, if you want to put a three quarter ton rear end in, you can actually just go out and buy the front hubs. Um, spindles, rotors. Actually, I don't even think you need the spindles. The, for just the front hubs and the front rotors. And just bolt them on. That's it. That'll make it eight lug. Um, so really the only swap worth doing in the front is a Dana 60. Uh, you can make a Dodge Dana 60 fit, but ideally you'd use a GM Dana 60, or if you swap your transfer case or something like that, maybe a Ford high pinion Dana 60 from a late 70s Ford. But um, the most common, obviously, is the Dana 60 out of a GM vehicle. And the easiest way to tell a Dana 60, other than looking at the cover and stuff like that, is to crawl right in here and look right there. If it has ball joints, it's not a GM Dana 60. If it's a GM Dana 60, it'll have king pins. Alright, if you don't know what those look like, you might want to check them out online. But it will have king pins, okay? If it doesn't have king pins, it's not a Dana 60. You can look at the diff cover and be all confused and stuff like that, but that's the quickest, easiest way to tell. If you're in a junkyard or something, just look. King pins, no king pins. This obviously has ball joints, so if it looks like this, it's not a Dana 60. They're also a lot bigger looking, but if you don't have anything to compare it to, you might not pick up on that. The other thing I did notice in, is in the 70s era trucks, the backing plate... Um, let me just open up this door for you guys. The backing plate's a hell of a lot beefier. Um, I'm sure they did this... I'm sure they changed to save money and to save cost down but if you look at this one off of 77 you can see the whole the whole plate is that you know quarter quarter inch thick steel the whole thing on the later ones it's just the bracket that holds the brake caliper and then this is like a tin shield right here they usually rot out so um, that's another another difference I mean if you really care about that kind of thing, you might want to put the backing plates off of an older one on just because they are thicker, heavier duty. Um, again, other differences you'll find in these retaining rings. Some have tabs, some have pins. Uh, the military ones are very unique in that they don't have the two rings, they just have one with the threaded slot. Uh, I'll make a separate video on that because it's very confusing and I was reading on most of the major websites and it's just not even funny how misinformed a lot of people are when it comes to those 
Um, a, you know, a few people know what they're talking about, but a lot of people go, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, that's not right, yada, yada, yada. Well, it's specific to the military uh, blazers with a 10-bolt front. Okay. The military blazers do not have one tons, they don't have a Dana 60 front, they don't have a corporate 14-bolt rear. Not that strong.